Hey guys, welcome back. With Halo Infinite still somewhere on the horizon, who really knows where, there's still some time left for speculation and wishful thinking, and so, in today's video, I want to do the latter. I want to talk about seven weapons that I would love to see make their return in Halo Infinite, but on the whole, my choices are more exotic than what you'd probably expect from a countdown video like this. There are some curveball weapons thrown in here that are definitely more obscure than your typical Halo weapons, but I'd still absolutely love to see regardless. And you know, with Infinite being the biggest Halo game to date and also kind of open world, I'd say there's probably more of a chance than ever before for them to be added, either at launch or somewhere down the line. I'm also going to give you just a little bit of lore for each weapon before discussing why I'd love to see it in the game, so, you know, technically this doubles up as both a countdown video and a lore video. Win-win. So, without any further ado, let's start counting down seven weapons and also three honourable mentions that I'd love to see in Halo Infinite. Starting off in the number seven spot, we have the absolute highlight of Reacher's weapon sandbox, the M319 Individual Grenade Launcher, also known as the Pro Pipe, the Noob Tube, or just the good old fashioned Nade Launcher. Manufactured by Misria Armory, this break action and breech loaded tube fires 40mm high explosive dual purpose grenades that, as the name suggests, have two different detonation modes. If the trigger is pulled like normal, then the grenade will simply ricochet once before exploding. However, if the trigger is held down and not released, the grenade primes and explodes once the trigger is released, creating a unique EMP blast in addition to the explosion. But you guys knew that already, and that's part of why this is such a fan favourite weapon. The grenade launcher really was a testament to Bungie's unique, interesting, yet kind of unbalanced weapon design that made almost all of their sandboxes so fun to play around in. And maybe that's why I love the grenade launcher. Personally, I found Reach's weapon sandbox to be really boring on the whole. Whenever I replay Reach now, I just use Vengeful Verdam's Reach Evolved mod to kind of spice it up a bit. But even in vanilla Reach, I can still have so much fun with the grenade launcher. It's one of those weapons that, on the surface level, yeah, it's pretty simple to use. You just fire a bouncy grenade that either explodes or EMPs. But when you take the time to learn it and learn how to properly use it, you realise that there's far more you can do with it beyond just blowing things up. My favourite gimmick being fishing, where you leave a primed grenade on the floor, whistling away, until an enemy comes up and inspects the weird noise that it's making and tries to see where that strange whistling sound's coming from. And then, when they're stood perfectly over it, you blow it up. There are very few weapons in Halo's history that have such good troll potential. All in all, the grenade launcher is a fantastic Halo take on a typical grenade launcher that is simple to use and yet hard to master, and on top of all of that, it's really just a satisfying, fun weapon to kill people with. Bring it back, 343, please. Coming in at the number 6 spot, we have the Type 31 Needle Rifle, but with a twist. So, typically, this fully automatic rifle would fire large shards of blamite at roughly 150 rounds per minute, but after a few shots into an unshielded target, Super Combine. However, as I said before, I'm not particularly a fan of Reacher's sandbox, and for me, the needle rifle is one of the worst offenders in it. It's a cool design, but in practice, I just found it to be kind of lame. So, why do I want it back in Halo Infinite? Well, I'm proposing a Banished twist on the conventional needle rifle. So, we know that the Banished love to repatriate old Covenant tech and add their own visceral and violent touch to it. So, let's see their take on a needle rifle. Turn it from a needle rifle into a spike rifle. Beef it up and make it look and sound and feel far more powerful than the needle rifle ever did, and maybe even make it into a sort of hybrid between a banished sniper and a banished DMR so it can feel weightier and, and pack more of a punch, both in its sound design and also in its damage profile. 
and I have this kind of perfect picture in my head as well of what it would look like. So it'd be the body of the needle rifle, but of course grey, with the banished like red logo crudely engraved onto it, with crimson lights of varying luminosity flickering on and off scattered across the chassis, and with the two halves of the barrel that kind of stick out, sharpened in a way to act like a makeshift bayonet, really crudely made. Crimson material or, or fabric, like what the banished brute miners have wrapped around their wrists, would be wrapped around the body of the gun, like it's almost trying to tie the gun together and hold it together to ensure that the chassis doesn't split in half when it's fired. In place of the needles on top of the gun would be superheated spikes with a really dark orange glow emanating from the holes that they're very crudely jammed into, and every time you fire a spike, the gun would shake quite violently and steam would emit from various orifices, almost as if the modifications that the Banished have made to this needle rifle made it so unstable and almost broken that it comes this close to tearing itself apart every time it's fired. Now, that might all sound very specific and kind of crazy, but it might not even be that far-fetched. So, if you cast your mind back to 2016, GameCheat 13 found some of the remnants of some brute weapons in Halo 5's files that were cut from the game, and there was a sort of spike DMR that acted very similarly to, kind of, kind of at least similarly, to what I just discussed. So, maybe these weapons in Halo 5 were really early concepts for Infinite. Or maybe it was something that 343 just kind of toyed with for a bit before scrapping. Who knows? But what I do know is that I would absolutely love to see the Banished take on a more aggressive and powerful needle rifle. In the number 5 spot, we have what is probably my favourite Halo weapon of all time. One that I love so much, I even have a one-to-one -one real life replica of. The Type 25 Plasma Rifle. Now ain't that dedication. Powered by a strange alien battery, this directed energy rifle fires bolts of superheated plasma at a velocity of 126 meters per second, and at an average RPM of 430, before needing to vent the waste heat that builds up within the chassis, during which the rifle is inoperable, but only for a brief second or two. Now, the curious case of the plasma rifle will forever confuse me. It was one of the most iconic and recognisable Halo weapons during Bungie's tenure, and yet 343 seem hellbent on replacing it with far less interesting and recognisable designs. The Storm Rifle was their first attempt in which they completely and utterly scrapped the iconic silhouette of the plasma rifle in favour of an alien gun that just look like another human gun, and I worry that Infinite's Pulse Carbine, although I do actually like the design overall, is going to be their second attempt at replacing the plasma rifle. I like the colouring and the detailing of the Pulse Carbine, but Elites just look like they're holding another human rifle when using it, just like the Storm Rifle, as opposed to the truly unique look of the plasma rifle. But its unique and iconic silhouette isn't the only reason that I want the Plasma Rifle to make a return. In the original trilogy, the Plasma Rifle was such a satisfying weapon to peel shields with, to mow down squads of grunts with, or shred through hordes of flood with. In multiplayer, the combat loop its damage profile created was really unique. You'd have to burst down someone's shields before switching to another weapon to finish up with a headshot, or just go in for a swift melee, and it gave it a really unique place in the sandbox where it was only effective against one type of health, shields, a place that was only rivalled by the plasma pistol. And furthermore, the original Combat Evolved plasma rifle was even better than that. Now, for some reason, this trait has been missing from every version of Combat Evolved since the original Xbox version, but it used to have a stun effect where prolonged fire on the same target caused their movement and their turning to slow down for a brief period. Status effects like this give a weapon so much more depth, and it's why the plasma rifle was so viable in original Combat Evolved. It wasn't just a weapon that killed good, it had a specific niche use case that made it interesting to have in your back pocket and pull out should the situation ask for it. And it saddens me that such a unique design trait has been missing in action since literally 2001. 
Now, of course, there's also the Brute version as well, which we got in Halo 2 and ODST and Halo 5 and also now Halo 3, but personally, I'm a classic plasma rifle stan, and <laughs> by classic, I mean classic. I'm talking the original Combat Evolved plasma rifle with the stun effect. Bring back the Combat Evolved plasma rifle in Halo Infinite in all of its iconic 2001 aesthetic and function glory, please, P43. Now, it wouldn't be a Halo countdown video without at least a few honorable mentions, now would it? You know, we, we've got to respect our elders, so this one goes out to you, Anodge. Today's first honorable mention is the Type 51 Carbine, a Covenant rifle that fires 8.7 by 60 mm caseless radioactive projectiles at 700 meters per second. If the impact doesn't kill you, then the radiation sure as hell will do. Now, the Carbine seems like a no-brainer, right? Of course the Carbine will be in Halo Infinite. Well, I'll be honest, fellas, I'm not so sure. I'm kind of worried. The fact that we have a weapon called the Pulse Carbine makes me think that it might not be. I get the feeling that the Pulse Carbine is 343 trying to create a weapon that kind of fills the role of both the Plasma Rifle and the Carbine at the same time. And, I mean, if you look at its functionality, it sure as hell looks like that. It looks to be a precision weapon meant for medium range, like the carbine, that fires three shot bursts of blue plasma energy and overheats, like the plasma rifle. Yes, it is possible that it could just be a variant of the carbine, but if the pulse carbine, the plasma rifle, and the standard carbine are all in the game at the same time, there could be some sandbox redundancy. There's quite a lot of overlap there. Either way though, I hope they are. I mean, the Covenant Carbine is, I'm gonna say it again, it's an iconic Halo weapon, and I'd love to see a grey and crimson banished take on it. And I mean, hell, if you really need to change its functionality to avoid sandbox redundancy and overlap with the Pulse Carbine, then maybe turn the regular Carbine into more of a longer range DMR with a slower fire rate and higher damage than before. I don't know, it's just an idea, but I, I just really hope that my beloved Covenant Carbine doesn't get shafted in Halo Infinite. 343, please. However, what good are cool weapons if they sound bad? I mean, there's a reason that the GM6 Lynx is literally the coolest gun ever created. But thankfully, Raycon are sponsoring today's video, and with their everyday E25 earbuds, you can be sure that you're getting the best audio possible. If you want to pick up a pair for yourself, then just head on over to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia for 15% off your first order. The everyday E25s are my earbud of choice, and as you know, they have been for quite a while now, and for good reason. I mean, they sound just as good as the other top brands that you know, yet they start at about half the price. And now, they even come with a 45-day free return policy, so you can make sure that they are the right pair of wireless earbuds for you. They're comfy, they have a fantastic design that comes in a wide array of colours, they have fantastic noise isolation, and really are the perfect fit for all of your earbud needs. On the go, while working out, while gaming, and honestly, while doing just about anything. So once again, head on over to buyraycon.com slash hiddenxperia to get 15% off a pair of their everyday E25 earbuds today. Thank you once again to Raycon for sponsoring the video, and let's return to the top half of the countdown. Now, in the number 4 spot we have a weapon that, frankly, I think we should expect to be in Halo Infinite, but we've not seen it yet, so I figured it deserved a place on this list. The Type 25 Brute Shot. A quintessentially brute weapon, the Brute Shot is a brute origin grenade launcher. Firing up to six Type 25 exotic high-explosive anti-personnel grenades fed via belt, and fit with a massive curved bleed, for when you really need to get your point across. 
Now, the brute shot really is a no-brainer, considering that the brutes are going to be the main enemy of Infinite. I mean, aesthetically, I would argue it's the most brutish weapon of all time, both aesthetically and also functionally as well. It's a rapid-fire, belt-fed grenade launcher with a gigantic razor-sharp blade for a stock that's capable of slicing directly through biomass like it's butter. And when it comes to gameplay, it yet again offers a unique spin on the conventional grenade launcher. Rapid fire, low to medium damage grenades make it great not only as an offensive weapon, allowing for the quick depletion of shields, displacement of enemies, vehicles, and even objects, but also as a utility weapon. The Brute Shot's lower damage allowed you to do a classic arena shooter style rocket jump with it by shooting the floor and jumping, or jumping against a wall and shooting beneath you, you could propel yourself to new heights, which was amazing for trick jumping or creating shortcuts or just getting out of a sticky situation. Again, the Brute Shot is just another one of those staple bungee weapons that on the surface level is really simple to just use and understand casually, but if you spend some time playing around with it in custom games, you'll find that it is far more than just a spammable grenade launcher with a really cool looking stock. And then the weapons that have since tried to replace it, the Concussion Rifle and Plasma Caster, just don't come even remotely close to being as interesting and deep as the Brute Shot, and given that not only are the banished Halo Infinite's main enemies, but that we know for a fact that they kit some of their warriors out with Brute Shots, it really would be a crying shame if it weren't to return in Halo Infinite. 343, please. Now, today's second honourable mention is an absolute pipe dream of mine. I don't expect for a second that we're going to see it in the game, but, you know, I never expected to see the Silent Shadow in a game either, and <laughs> here we are. This weapon is the M99 Stanchion, a sniper rifle that fires 5.4mm rounds using Gorse technology, which gives it an incredible velocity of 9.3 miles per second, yes, miles, and allowing one round, despite its rather small caliber, to penetrate entire office blocks, thick concrete, and blow a human apart should its operator land their shot. It's a gorse sniper rifle, I mean, <laughs> do I really need to say any more? This absolute monster of a rifle that, funnily enough, shares its designation with the real-world 50BMG Barrett M99 needs to be usable in an FPS. It was first introduced in the story's second sunrise over New Mombasa in the graphic novel all the way back in, I think it was 2006, and then was later used by Johnson in Contact Harvest to literally <laughs> eviscerate a terrorist from the side of a helicopter through an entire office block on Harvest, and then later, much to my excitement, it became the standard issue sniper rifle for the UNSC sniper unit in Halo Wars 2, which is a step in the right direction, but we need to go further. Add it as a heavy variant of the regular sniper, maybe even put it in the same weapon category as like the portable turret and the missile pod, where it makes you walk slower when holding it, doesn't have much ammo, but packs an incredible punch. Honestly, I don't, I don't know, I don't care how you do it, just, just do it, 343. Please, please let us use the stanchion in Halo Infinite. Please. Coming in third on the podium, we have another pipe dream weapon of mine. A weapon that I've dreamt of using since 2007, and I know that I'm not the only one here. The Katana. Now, <laughs> this might sound crazy, right? But just hear me out. So, back in the 1999, or it may have been the 2000 build of Halo CE, there existed a human melee weapon, the Machete, which clearly was later scrapped, but became an iconic part of Halo's difficulty icons, so it lived on in a way. Then, in 2004, Halo finally got its melee weapon, the Energy Sword. However, as much as we all love the Energy Sword, many, myself included, still yearned for a UNSC melee weapon. And then Halo 3 came along and gave us the Katana, but as cool as it was, 
It was just one big debate from Bungie. They finally gave us a UNSC melee weapon, and we couldn't actually use it. Mind you, that didn't stop 11 year old me from relentlessly googling how to use katana in Halo 3. You'd be sad to hear that my research hit a dead end. Then, 13 long years went by, and nothing. Our beloved katana never came back after Halo 3, and we never got the mythical UNSC melee weapon. But 343, Infinite is the time to change that. Bring back the katana as both a cosmetic, just like it was in Halo 3, but also as an actual usable weapon as well. Yes, I know katanas were rarely used in combat and weren't meant for combat, but rule of cool people. The rule of cool. I'll be honest, right? I have no idea how I'd balance the katana for gameplay or how I'd differentiate it from the energy sword. Maybe give it infinite ammo and infinite durability with lower damage and a faster swing speed so it functions kind of like the Halo 2 sword. You could also take away its ability to lunge but give it a bigger swipe range so without lunging you can still attack things that are further away from you but you need good movement to get yourself in a position where you're close enough to swing in place of just being able to lunge. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. All I know is that I want my Spartan to be able to wear and actually use the katana in Halo Infinite. Is it really too much to ask to make my 11 year old Halo 3 playing fantasies come true? No, no, I, I, I didn't think so. 343, please give us the UNSC Katana in Halo Infinite. Please. Okay, in the penultimate spot, I have one of the most underrated Halo weapons of all time that should absolutely return and also be elaborated upon. The Sentinel Beam. Built into Aggressor Sentinels, and also some rarely encountered variants of the Aggressors, the Sentinel Beam fires a superheated negative charged ion particle beam, designed specifically for containing and neutralizing flood forms of all varying shape, size, and purpose. So, the Sentinel Beam was always a pretty simple weapon, but I'd say a unique one at that. It was the only low damage beam based weapon in Halo, or at least the only weapon that fired a continuous beam as opposed to a single beam like the beam rifle. Of course, until the focus rifle came along, which personally I found to be far, far less interesting. It always had like such a confusing alien design that gave it this really distinctive look and silhouette and that made it a, a really fun, albeit slightly overpowered weapon to use in both campaign and also multiplayer. I'd love to see the regular old Sentinel Beam make its glorious return in Halo Infinite, but just a second ago I said that I wanted it to also be elaborated on, so allow me to explain. So, based on the original Infinite Reveal trailer from 2018, it's clear that Sentinels are going to play somewhat of a role in Halo Infinite, from the aggressors in the background in the canyon, to that weird underwater model that we see inspecting the Warthog. And it wouldn't surprise me if we're also introduced to more new and also returning Sentinels, the more we explore Zeta Halo. My fingers are crossed for enforcers. If you're going to expand the Sentinels as an enemy type, then expand the Sentinel weapon sandbox as well and introduce more variations of the standard Sentinel beam. I mean, the only two variations we've seen so far, the gold beam in Halo 2 and the safeguard beam in Halo 5, are literally just slightly different looking regular beams. Like, do something different with it. Create variants of the beam that function differently and fill different roles in the overall sandbox, yet continue to retain that iconic Sentinel Beam design. The Sentinel Beam is one of my favourite Halo weapons. It's one of the most unique that the game has ever seen, and I really feel like it deserves some love, and I would love for Infinite to be the game to do that. Bring back old Trusty, and also introduce some of his new pals alongside him, and I'll be a very, very happy man. Okay, so before we hit the number one spot, we have today's final honourable mention. A double whammy, if you will. The classic Halo CE M60 Magnum and MA5B Assault Rifle. 
The M60 is a 12 round mag fed recoil operated fully automatic pistol chambered in 12.7 by 40 millimeter semi armor piercing high explosive rounds and is commonly referred to as the God pistol. The MA5B is a monster of an assault rifle chambered in 762 by 51 millimeter full metal jacket armor piercing rounds and loaded via a 60 round magazine of which it can dump at 15 rounds per second. Referred to as the bullet hose by some, this bullpup AR is a thing of beauty. So why do I want both of these weapons to return and why the double whammy? Well, it's no secret that Infinite is taking a lot of inspiration from Halo Combat Evolved and what better homage could 343 make to the game that kicked everything off than to bring back its default loadout. Not only that, but a loadout made up of two incredibly unique and yet to be replicated weapons. Well, the M60 did technically come back in Halo 5, but bring it back again in all of its former glory, and the same goes for the ME5B too. Honestly, I miss when the AR was a bullet hose that sounded like a Gatling gun. Besides, maybe Halo 4, the sound design for the AR has just paled in comparison since, and I really miss it. And furthermore, the pistol and AR in Infinite both look, sound, and function radically different to the M60 and the MA5B, so more so than ever before, in fact, they'd slot into the sandbox nicely without any overlap. Honestly, before 3, I feel like it'd be kind of rude not to include both of these weapons in Halo Infinite. And in the number one spot, we have one of my favorite weapon types across all of gaming and easily, easily the most slept on weapon in the history of Halo, the flamethrower. But I'm not talking about the Virgin Halo 3 heavy flamethrower that does more damage to its user than the enemy stood two feet away from them. I'm talking about the Chad Halo Combat Evolved flamethrower. The M7057 Defoliant Projector ignites a stream of Pyrocene 5, spewing excruciatingly hot flames that stick to any surface that they come in contact with, metal or flesh. However, given the absurd amount of heat that this generates, the projector itself requires frequent venting. I really miss when flamethrowers were a staple of the FPS genre. Back in like the early to mid 2000s, every FPS game had its own take on the flamethrower, but when they all started to become more homogenized in like the 2010s, the flamethrower started to kind of fade away. However, what better franchise is there than Halo to usher in the next great age of the video game flamethrower? For real though, I have a massive soft spot for Halo C's flamethrower for some reason. I just, I, I love the design of it, the industrial aesthetic of the body and the fuel canister clashes really nicely with the kind of retro future styled fuel and temperature display, and I love how it functions as well. For some strange reason, I love using this thing in multiplayer, even though it's not that great, and I'll forever be sad that it was cut from a campaign. I can only imagine how fun it would have been torching the halls of the Truth and Reconciliation and literally melting through hordes of flood with it. Halo 3's flamethrower really didn't cut it for me. I mean, it looked kinda cool, I guess, but functionally, it was just really boring and, and just not as good as Combat Evolves. It wasn't as interesting. I'd love to see 343 bring this bad boy back and pump new life into it. Maybe take some inspiration from Turok Evolution's flamethrower. I, I know that's, that's a very strange game to reference, but I also grew up playing that game, so I, I love that game's flamethrower as well. It had a really cool alternate firing mode that gave it more range with a little bit less damage. Maybe do something like that. I don't know, I'm, I'm just spitballing here. Ultimately, I really don't care how it comes back. I'd just love to see Halo reunite with its flamethrower after so many years. Let me load a fuel canister and torch a banished camp and Infinite will be an instant 10 out of 10 for me. 343, I really want to set a fire in the banished heart, a literal fire. But to do that, I need my precious flamethrower back. Please 343, bring her back in Halo Infinite. I will be over the moon if you do. 
And so, those are seven weapons that I would love to see return in Halo Infinite. Technically 12, if you count the honourable mentions. I'm really hoping that Halo Infinite's weapon sandbox is the most diverse and varied yet, given how big the game is slated to be, and adding some of these bad boys in there would only make it more so, while also making your boy very, very happy. So you know, it's a win-win situation. Let me know down in the comments what you think of my choices, and if there's any weapons that you would like to see make their return in Halo Infinite. Weapons that should return for maybe an older Halo, or maybe weapons that you think should get their game debut in Infinite. Let me hear your ideas. But with that said, that's all for today's video. I want to give a massive thank you to JJAB91 for becoming a new iconic one over on Patreon. Thank you very much, my dude. Along with, of course, everyone else who continues to support me over there. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one.